Welcome back. All right, let's solve the last two. Um, so this one here, factors, right? This is just a difference of squares. It's a good thing because uh, that won't, oops, there goes my eraser. That won't take us too long to factor and because I don't have too much space. So we have f of x equals difference of squares. That's going to be the square root of x squared, which is x, minus the square root of 25, which is 5, and then square root plus square root. So x minus 5 times x plus 5. Notice nothing matches. So we have no holes because I didn't cancel anything out. We do have two vertical asymptotes, however. We have one at 5 and one at negative 5. So I, did I say, I'll probably say two vertical asymptotes. We have two vertical asymptotes. x equals 5 and x equals negative 5, but no holes. The last one. Now this one also factors the same fact. It's the same thing. X squared minus 25. So when we factor that, this would be x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 times x plus 5. Now though we see we have an x minus 5 in the numerator and the denominator. So in reduced form we could write this function as 1 in the numerator. Right? We have to have a placeholder. Right? We divide, we divide x minus 5 by itself, we get 1, right? and then x plus 5 in the denominator. So now we don't have two vertical asymptotes, we only have 1. We have 1 at negative 5. Because we canceled x minus 5, that's now a hole. Let's find out where the hole is. So f of 5 is 1 divided by 5 plus 5, that's 1 tenth. So there is a hole in our function at uh, 5 1 tenth. So there wouldn't be an asymptote, there would just be a hole at that location. All right. So now you've learned how to find the, you know, the difference about vertical asymptotes and holes. We're always going to find our holes first and then our vertical asymptotes. Even though I wrote the vertical asymptotes first, I really reduced and I found where my hole was. The one that was still left was a vertical asymptote. The one I canceled was a hole. Let's take a look at one graph, all right? So this one is in your notes, right? We have this one in your notes. And this is going to actually be a really easy graph. Um, so a hole is a point that doesn't exist in our function, right? If it were, it, it's not a vertical asymptote because we canceled it, but because it was there, we have to still remember it was there. All right, so let's factor this one so that we can find if we have a vertical asymptote or a hole. All right, so 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. Two numbers that multiply to give us negative 12, but add to give us our b term of 1. That's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 4. All right, so we have x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12. And we can pull out the x, and we have an x minus 3. We can divide both of those by 4, and we would have an x minus 3 when we divide it by 4. So what we, the factor we pulled out is one factor, and uh, the terms we pulled out is one factor, and the repeating x minus 3 is the other. So now I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 4 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Well, I see I can cancel out that x minus 3. And that means my function is now x plus 4. Well, that's not even a rational function anymore. That's just a line. All right? So it's not going to look like our normal rational functions, and this is not going to have a vertical asymptote. So we have no vertical asymptote. Oh, by the way, this, this you can write in your notes because we, uh, this one is in your notes. All right, so we have no vertical asymptote. Right? We factored, and we, we are going to set our, we have nothing left in the denominator to set equal to 0. Uh, so no vertical asymptote. Um, we canceled the factor in the denominator. However, we can't just forget that it was there. So that means we have a whole at x minus 3 equals 0 or x equals 3. We need the y coordinate. We're going to plug it into the reduced function. So we're going to substitute 
substitute into the reduced function to find the whole. And I kind of combined those two words and made up a new word. Reduced function to find the whole. So, if I plug in 3, f of 3 is equal to 3 plus 4, or 7. So that means we have a whole at 3, 7. That just doesn't exist in our function. Let's take a look at this graph. It's a super easy graph. Can't think of an easier graph. All right, so I already have the hole that I noticed my hole at 3, 7. So in your notes, you also have a hole. I left you a hole too. All right, so we're just graphing a line, x, y equals x plus 4. Well, that's pretty easy to graph. This has a y-intercept at 0, 4. And it has a slope of 1. It really is just a line. But it's not just a line because it used to have a denominator. So because it used to have a denominator, at that one place where the denominator would have been 0 before we canceled it, we have a hole. Otherwise, it's just like any other line. So notice I'm going to go to there, and I'm going to literally hop over my hole. If you don't hop over your hole, you will be sucked into never, never land, and nobody will ever hear from you again. So you better make sure you jump over that hole. I'm not kidding. You will explode. All right, so there we go. There's our graph. So there's no vertical asymptote. The factor in the denominator was reduced. But because x minus 3 is a value in the denominator before reducing, x, equal th x equals 3 is eliminated from the domain and f of 3 is eliminated from the range. Because if x can't be 3, then y can't be 7. Because the only way that x plus 4 ever equals 7 is if x is 3. But x can't equal 3. So that means our domain is we're going to take out the whole. And on our range, we're going to take out the y-coordinate of the whole. So our domain is negative infinity to 3, 3 to infinity. Range is negative infinity to 7, 7 to infinity. The function just literally jumps over that, over that uh, that point. And I think that's the last one I'm going to do. So you basically have all the first page of your notes done. Um, I have a little bit of extra stuff there in, um, that I didn't go over in your notes um, because it also talks a little bit about slant asymptotes, but we'll see that in another lesson. So I'm going to stop here and we'll graph the, the ones on the back page um, in the uh, next lesson. And uh, I will give you those notes, like I said, um, that uh, these ones here with all the, all the pretty little holes and vertical asymptotes. So uh, on the Nearpod, make sure you answer those couple questions. It gives me an idea if you understood this lesson, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in class. Bye!